to start now. Uh, you're all very welcome uh, to this webinar. My name is Dr. Pamela Dongo. I work with JSI as a Senior Technical Advisor for the HIV and Infectious Disease Center. And today we are glad to host this webinar uh, that is titled, What About Boys and Young Men? The Missed Opportunities for HIV Prevention and Treatment. We're glad to have a, a very experienced panel with a lot of their uh, experience to share. And this webinar will be moderated by Ms. Tiwana James, who is a senior youth advisor at the USID Office of HIV and AIDS. Uh, Tiwana is an expert in adolescent and young uh, adult sexual reproductive health and HIV prevention. And she's had over 25 years of experience serving the youth, their families and their communities, both in the US and in many other countries in the world. Without much ado, I would like to hand over to Tiwana. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you so much, Pamela. I'm glad to be here with you all this morning. Um, as we get started, we thought we would like to launch a poll. Um, Sarah, if you could start the poll, please. So you'll see we have three questions here. Um, one is, while many HIV prevention programs rightfully focus on adolescent girls and young women who are most vulnerable, meeting the HIV prevention needs of adolescent boys and young men can have a positive impact on outcomes for both ABYM and AGYW. If you can indicate whether you strongly agree, strongly disagree, or are somewhere in the middle. The next question is reaching and serving adolescent boys and young men has value separate and apart from its impact on outcomes for AGYW. And the last question is, we should be doing more to reach adolescent boys and young men. So if you wouldn't mind taking the poll and we'll give you a moment or so to do that and then I'll ask Sarah to share the results. Thank you. Sarah, do we have enough respondents to share the results yet? Yes, we do. Okay. All right, great. So the first question, um, while HIV prevention programs rightfully focus on girls, it's important that we address the needs of um, adolescent boys and young men as it has a positive impact for both. And I see 77% of our respondents agreed strongly with that statement. Moving to the next one, reaching and serving adolescent boys and young men has value separate and apart from its impact on outcomes for AGYW. And again, we have about 72% who agree with that statement. Most of us are on the agree or strongly disagree uh, end of the spectrum. And the same for the last question we, or statement, we should be doing more to reach adolescent boys and young men. So thank you so much for your feedback and for participating in the poll. Um, I think these questions and statements really help us set the tone for the webinar today, as many of us seem to be in agreement that we could and should be doing more to reach and serve adolescent boys and young men. So again, good morning, panelists and guests. I want to thank you for joining us for what promises to be a very exciting and insightful discussion. Today's session will be a bit of a departure from the norm in that as opposed to presentations and Google Slides, we are simply going to have a conversation. A conversation with several young men and male champions who will help us examine the frequently asked question, what about the boys? 
We will examine where we may be missing opportunities to involve adolescent boys and young men in HIV prevention, discuss how we can better engage them around issues related to gender-based violence and HIV prevention, treatment, and care specifically, but also how we can include and support them in improving their overall physical and mental health and well-being. Much of the current discourse around achieving gender equality centers on the need to address the specific vulnerabilities and realities of adolescent girls and young women, and this is for good reason. They are facing a multitude of persistent problems, including the fact that adolescent girls are at higher risk of HIV infection, of facing harmful cultural practices, being excluded from school, suffering from the negative consequences of an unintended pregnancy, and of intimate partner violence and gender-based violence. To address these issues, the rights of women and girls and the importance of gender equality has been elevated and reflected in global, regional, and many national policies and frameworks. However, similar policies are less likely to exist to address the unique needs of adolescent boys and young men. Many of them also face their own structural and individual barriers to prevention. These include transportation costs, distances to health facilities, and long wait times, as well as a lack of knowledge of HIV, the fear of testing positive, the stigma associated with HIV, negative perceptions of health-seeking behaviors among men, provider bias, lack of confidentiality, and the often uninviting clinical setting where many of us work. In the spirit of nothing for us without us, we will hear directly from young men and male champions on their thoughts about both barriers and opportunities for our consideration to help address their needs. We are positioning adolescent boys and young men at the center of our discussion today, not as perpetrators of violence or other social ills, but because they are our fathers, our brothers and our sons, and they are in need of programs and services in their own right, and not only to the extent that it impacts outcomes for adolescent girls and young women. We are positioning them at the center of our discussion because many of their needs are not being met, because they are deserving of our time and attention, and because in many ways their pain is going unnoticed. As you might suspect, it's no accident that I'm sitting in front of this picture today. Not only is it a beautiful piece of art from Ghana, but it's a visual reminder for me that boys matter and that they need my help and your help too. And that our destinies are inextricably linked, boys and girls, women and men. My belief does not in any way diminish my lifelong commitment to working with and on behalf of adolescent girls and young women, and these two beliefs exist in harmony. In full disclosure, I am also the proud mother of a son, so I see firsthand how society's perceptions of Black men in particular and of men in general impacts their mental and physical health and well-being. I have become all too familiar with the struggles to define what it means to be a man and how this can impact their sense of self, their roles within their families, and ultimately their relationships with the women and men they love. Today, we are sounding the alarm and calling attention to the needs of adolescent boys and young men. We are also putting a spotlight on the promise they hold for the part they can play in reducing the spread of HIV, shifting the paradigm in the way we see them and how they see themselves, for reducing intimate partner violence and helping them become more productive members of society. When we engage in a more holistic approach to gender equality, both girls and boys and society at large stands to reap the lifelong benefits. So now enough for me, let's hear from our panelists. And again, welcome to our discussion today. I will start us off with a question to help us learn a little bit more about our panelists. 
So beginning with Morton, please tell us a little bit about yourself, including where you're from, what some of your interests and passions are, and what you have learned or gained or done differently as a result of participating in HIV programs. Morton. Uh, thank you so much uh, for having me as one of your esteemed respondents and panelists. Can you get me clearly? Yes, we can. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mambu Morton. I'm young in my 20s. I'm from uh, Zambia, and Copper Belt and Mushili Township. Uh, I'm an adolescent boys and uh, young men prep mentor. Uh, with support of uh, USA Discover Health implemented by JSI. I'm a clinical officer general by profession, but currently unemployed. But uh, using my passion for improving health amongst my uh, fellow peers, I'm volunteering as uh, an adolescent boys and young men mentor in my community. Uh, and outside work, I love listening to music, watching soccer, playing pool, and I'm a recording and performing artist at the same time, which benefits my role as an adolescent boys and young men mentor in my community, because I get to interact with a lot of young people during my road shows and other social gatherings where I get to reach out to my peers out there. And uh, during my engagement with the JSI project, I have come to learn that there's a knowledge gap among us, the young population. And what I mean is that uh, only four out of 10 adolescents actually know that correct use of condoms and limiting themselves to one an infected sexual partner is actually a, a prevention method for HIV. And that uh, a good looking and healthy person can also have HIV. And uh, what I've come to do different about this is that uh, I've, I've become so courageous to be a source of information to my peers. And uh, believe me, my passion for uh, being a recording artist has made me naturally be found in adolescent boys and young men dominated areas, which is a game changer to my community because we are turning those spaces into friendly spaces while well, we can reach out to the young men and adolescent boys out there, link them to HIV services like uh, voluntary medical male circumcision and uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis for HIV. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Madam James, you can take it up. Thank you so much for sharing your wonderful work, Morton. The, the passion and your commitment really comes through in your remarks. Can we hear from Malinzani next? Well, um, my name is Malizan, as a uh, red list aide, uh, coming from Malawi, uh, Zomba to be precise, which is uh, in the southeastern part of Malawi. Uh, call me a lead farmer, call me a community development worker, call me a coach. I was born and raised in a, a rural area. Uh, growing up as a young man, I faced a lot of challenges. For example, uh, lack of school fees, uh, walking a very long distance, for example, 15 kilometers one way to access primary education. Uh, I faced uh, 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 large uh, access can I can I come again? Sure, take your time. Yes, please. Okay, fine. I said uh, growing up, I faced a lot of challenges. From example, for example, uh, working long distance to access primary education, lack of school fees, and and in addition to that, uh, gender norms and uh, and cultural norms and gender expectations also uh, oppressed us very much. So much so that as uh, a male child. I was not expected to to, uh, to to complain anything regardless of the situation. So it is from this background that I, I, I developed a passion uh, to be a game changer in my community. With my background, uh, uh, with this background, I have learned that uh, men 
can be greatest game changers given a chance and mentorship. Uh, I've learned this from the experience that are uh, with the little, uh, I mean, a very few men that we have reached so far, uh, they're taking reading roles uh, to uh, in their families to 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 access or to to uh, uh, hello. Yes, men are taking a reading reading law in advocating for uh, HIV AIDS, you know, prevention measures like PM, CDC, uh, PEP and PrEP, and an indication that, uh, you know, we are in the right direction to access, I mean, I mean, to achieve 95, 95, 95. My approach uh, in, in uh, male engagement and, and the dissemination does not, does not end in information dissemination only. I've also uh, been working hand in hand with uh, uh, DREAMS facilitators, who uh, uh, normally engage uh, HYWs. Now, in the course of in, in, in engaging the HYWs, I've also learned uh, uh, to understand that uh, HYWs complain that uh, 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 male sexual partners tend to dominate when it comes to making decisions, for example, uh, regarding condoms and contraceptions. But uh, during my work, after engaging them with, in, in sessions, uh, the, the adolescent boys and young men have learned uh, to, to be to open up and uh, give a chance to you know uh, uh, the AGYWs for open discussions so that at, at the end of the day they are all in the right direction to discuss issues. So uh, in short, uh, that's what I can say about what I've learned so far uh, in, in, in the male engagement. Sorry, Thank I'm a little you. bit nervous, but uh, one or two things that uh, when we were trying to connect. It's okay. Take your time. But thank you so much for all that you have shared. And I think you've given us a great example of how adolescent boys and young men and adolescent girls and young women can partner together to better understand one another and to work together to uh, prevent HIV. So I hope we'll get a chance to talk more about that a bit later. Thank you. Um, Oscar, can we hear from you now? All right. Um, thank you very much. I hope you're getting me clear. Yes, we are. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am Tim Oscar, a part of peer leader based at Adolescent Clinic in Lira Regional Referral Hospital in uh, Lira City, Northern Uganda. I am incredibly passionate uh, about working with uh, adolescents and young adults. As a part of my role, I am dedicated to making the adolescent clinic uh, friendly and supportive for the young people. Uh, participating in the JSI program has been an enlightening and uh, a rewarding experience for me. One of the most significant aspects of my role is to provide uh, peer support to young people living with HIV and AIDS. As uh, me myself, I'm living with HIV positively. Uh, JSI has indeed equipped me with uh, the valuable skills and knowledge on how to effectively engage and support these individuals. I have learned to be a better listener, to emphasize with their unique uh, challenges. I uh, provide counseling services to the non-suppressed clients. If they suppress, it is my joy. And I do offer technical assistance on the uh, implementation of the DOTS and YAPS model. For those who don't know what YAPS is, uh, YAPS is a uh, young adolescent peer supporters that is uh, that is being that is being implemented in Uganda. Uh, and I, I also make sure that all my adolescents receive the necessary care services that they require whenever they come to the to the hospital. So I do linkage, I I, I do referral if they if they turn up to the facility for 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 any medical services. So through GSI program, I have had opportunities to connect with other professionals and organizations working in the field of HIV and, uh, and AIDS, especially the platform we are in right now. This networking uh, has been valuable for sharing best practices, learning from others' experiences, and collaborating on projects that benefit the young people. 
and I always do my best to make sure that these practices that I learn from from these platforms, like the one that I'm in right now, I make make sure that reach out to my fellow young people, and uh, it will be for the good of my own community. And uh, on a personal level, I have grown my I have grown through my participation in uh, in the program. It has given me a sense of purpose and fulfillment in my work. I have seen the positive and the positive impact I can have on the lives of young people, helping them cope positively with their HIV status and achieve viral suppression, which I always call them king when you reach that level. Uh, JSI program has enabled me to be more effective and compassionate peer supporter. That is uh, an amazing thing that I can say uh, the most a big thing that for me that uh, as uh, I have gained through working with JSI, JSI. I am grateful for the opportunity to be part of the program and I'm super, super grateful uh, for the positive change it has brought to the lives of the of those living with HIV in my community. Uh, think, I think that describes really who I am and my passion. Thank you. Oscar, thank you so much for your um, comments. I, I can tell you're such a promising young man and uh, a role model for others to follow. Thank you so much. Um, now, Isaac, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, your interests and passion, and what you've learned? Thank you so much, Madam Tijuana. Thanks for having me. Isaac Enriquez is my name from Takwadi in the Western region of Ghana. West Africa. I work with Maritime Life Precious Foundation under the JSI USA Strength in the Care Continuum Project, and I am the program officer. With many years of experience in assisting and supporting both general and key population living with HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases to assess equity and quality care to live a well meaningful and a balanced life. Of course, I'm a driven person who seeks to be the voice of the voiceless, increasing awareness and promoting safe sex among sexually active adolescent boys, young and men, and also to establish an adolescent friendly healthcare center to promote quality healthcare to all adolescents. And uh, I believe my participation in JSI program initiatives has allowed me to maximize the power of radio to educate the public about HIV AIDS. And this includes addressing issues like stigmatization, the significance of testing, the efficacy of treatment, importance of PrEP, and again, advocating for correct and consistent use of condoms and lubricants among adolescent boys, young and men, and the high risk groups to reduce new infections. So inside, discouraging multiple sexual partners, promoting safe sex, and using the same channel to lowering community viral load through antiviral therapy. More so, my engagement in JS activities has provided me with a platform to connect, engage, and collaborate with influential, influential stakeholders. And I believe with this collaboration, we have developed effective strategies, including community health talks, aim at shaping social norms, attitude, beliefs, and ABYM understanding of their sexual health and establishing them as essential partners in the prevention of HIV. Thank you so much, Madam Tijuana. Thank you, Isaac. It is really um, a pleasure to have you as a partner and ally and an advocate for adolescent boys and young men. Last but not least, we'll hear from Totello. Can you please tell us a bit about yourself? Oh, greetings, good people. My name is Tatelo Ramenti. I'm from South Africa, uh, Alexander Township. I work for an adolescent health organization called Grassroots Soccer, and I have 
over a decade working with young people and I've been with Grassroots Soccer for eight years. Um, my current uh, role right now, it's being a master coach. My primary role at Grassroots Soccer is to implement the skills program to help adolescent boys and young men to face the challenges and to break the discrimination and the stigma around HIV and AIDS. My passion is soccer and I love listening to music. Mm -hmm. And also, I would like to see the change within uh, my community when it comes to HIV and AIDS, you know, um, helping people to be much more informed about HIV and AIDS because people are misinformed about HIV and AIDS. They think when you are HIV positive, it's the end of your life. But uh, with the program that I do, I take him through programs and sessions and to learn more about HIV and AIDS, how to live healthy, how to reduce uh, sexual partners, and also to abstain. There's nothing wrong to abstain. You know, it helps you to stay healthy. And also, I help young boys to understand themselves, to understand, you know, to understand um, there's a lot of HIV positive. If someone is HIV positive, they're still your friend. They still have a family member. We're breaking the stigma around HIV. Thank you. Thank you so much to Tella and, and to all of you for what you have shared with us. It is really heartening to hear the passion and commitment in your voices as you describe the work you're doing and what brought you to this space. So I think I'll move on to our next question and I'll start with Morton. Adolescent boys and young men continue to lag behind in case finding and treatment outcomes in Sub-Saharan Africa. How do you think gender roles affect adolescent boys and young men in the context of the HIV response? And what are some of your motivations for keeping yourself and your peers healthy? Morton? You're on mute. Okay, great. You can get me now? All right, uh, so before I take this question, allow me to stipulate a point or two uh, regarding uh, gender roles in my country. So uh, according to gender roles in my country, uh, women are expected to be uh, polite, nurturing, and accommodating, and male are expected to be strong and bold, uh, which is so unfortunate because uh, it has uh, made the males think that they have the capacity to uh, withstand or recover quickly from illness or that when they seek medical attention they're going to be considered as weak uh, and one of the most significant health concerns uh, regarding the males in general is their reluctance when it comes to seeking medical uh, attention. I mean this uh, reluctance is partly attributed to uh, gender norms that uh, equate uh, illness uh, with weakness and regarding sexually uh, sexual reproductive health as a foremost uh, female issue and uh, resulting into uh, poor uptake of uh, health services uh, uh, affecting early detection of HIV and effective treatment. And uh, the other thing is that um, gender roles also create uh, social pressure among us, the adolescent boys and young men. Uh, I mean, I, it forces them to uh, involve into illicit activities like uh, substance abuse and alcohol uh, abuse at an early stage, uh, of which when they resist or when they say no to that, they think they're going to be considered as cowards by their fellow peers. So they are following, uh, they, they fall along just to uh, feel comfortable around their peers and which is uh, predisposing them to HIV transmission because substance abuse and alcohol is one of the uh, significant drivers to HIV transmission. And uh, the other thing is that, uh, talking of motivation, uh, today's youth are, are the leaders of tomorrow. I mean, for us to take up the leadership positions in the future, 
We need to be healthy and strong. We need to live a healthy lifestyle. You understand? Uh, so my motivation and uh, for keeping myself healthy and my fellow peers healthy is the fact that we're tomorrow's leaders. The country, my country, needs strong and healthy population of uh, young people to take up the leadership positions uh, in future for national development. Uh, I think that's that, Madam Tiwana. You can take it up. Thank you so much. I think your comments were right on point. And I made a note when you talked about men's reluctance to access health care, because that is not unique to adolescent boys and young men or to the continent of Africa, as I think about the, the men, young and old in my own life and their discomfort with accessing health services. I think that's something we all could do a bit more to address. So thank you for those comments. To tell her, I have the same um, question for you. Uh, you know, what do you, how do you think gender roles affect adolescent boys and young men in the context of the HIV response and what motivates you? Uh, because of negative gender stereotypes, men often feel pressure to conform to standards that puts them at the risk of contracting HIV, perpetrating intimate partner, uh, violence and poor mental health. In many communities, um, the belief system promotes that being a man means you have to have more than one sexual partner. Um, you don't have to use a condom consistently and you don't go to the clinic. And like the common phase that I always hear in my community is that men don't cry, real men, they don't show feelings, which it makes boys to be much more likely to address the problems which they face you know, and that becomes a big problem overall for their health. But I'm motivated because of I'm surrounded by game changers, people who are positive to bring changes within our community. Like my fellow coaches at Grassroots Soccer, they inspire and motivate me to be the best that I can be and be different within my community and bring the change, bring the gender equality. You know, as human beings, we are equal. So my fellow coaches always, always help me to be a better version of myself and the one I changed the community. Thank you. Thank you very much for that answer. I, I noted in your remarks the, question, the importance of questioning our ideas about manhood and the both positive and negative effects um, perceptions about manhood can have on young boys as they are growing and developing. So thank you very much for raising that to our awareness. Um, my next question is for Milizani and for Oscar. If you could recommend one policy change in your country to try to promote health and well being for boys and young men in the context of their personal, family, or professional lives, what would it be? What one policy change recommendation would you have for your country? Milizani, can you take the first part of this? Thanks. Uh, my country, Malawi, has uh, an AGYW uh, policy, a strategy, but not uh, uh, an, uh, an ABYM policy. I would recommend that uh, uh, it's good we have uh, uh, a policy that speaks to both with uh, uh, mental health as, uh, as a key issue. Uh, depression and Sorry, we're having a problem with your sound. Maybe if you turn off your video, we'll be able to hear you better. Sorry about that. Okay, try again. All right, uh, I said uh, to begin with uh, Malawi as a country, as uh, an AGYM, I mean, AGYW strategy, but not uh, an uh, ABYM strategy. I would recommend that the country should have a strategy that speaks to both with mental health being a key issue. Uh, this should have, uh, the policy should address, I mean, uh, personal and family uh, issues 
Uh, depression, anxiety, and stress affect uh, boys and young men at a high rate that they keep their feeding, feelings uh, uh, bottled up. So uh, I think to myself that uh, this problem uh, could be uh, avoided. For example, the problems that I'm talking about is like uh, we hear uh, cases of you know uh, suicides, we hear uh, uh, cases of you know uh, uh, men involved in uh, I mean young men involved in in violence. So I think this is something that we can be uh, can be avoided if we have a, a deliberate policy. That uh, could uh, uh, could be you know stressing much on the awareness for mental health by investing in mental health support. I think uh, this can be uh, this can lead to uh, productive uh, citizens uh, among young men and and and, and boys. Uh, in the policy, there is need to ensure that uh, mental health services are readily available and accessible to, to the adolescent boys and young men, both at community level and uh, at, at health facilities. For example. Uh, uh, the youth-friendly services. We also need to make sure that the policy stress, uh, stresses on, on uh, positive mental health in a holistic way, uh, so that uh, uh, those boys and young men are able to relate and apply to themselves instead of uh, the, the mental uh, illness model that we have that medicalizes and uh, you know stigmatizes. By prioritizing the mental health for adolescent boys and young men, I think the country can create a healthier and a resilient and a productive citizens uh, in our country. This is how uh, I feel about the policy that we have at the moment. It's, it's more uh, of favoring the, the, the adolescent girls and young women, uh, young women but not uh, the uh, adolescent uh, uh, boys and young men. It's, it's favoring the adolescent girls and young women, but not the uh, adolescent boys and young men. So if, it's, it, if it could be changed and hence to be a holistic approach, I think it would help us much. Great, thank you, Malanzani. And thank you so much for raising the issue of mental health. I don't think the importance can be understated. And it's also tied to the previous comments about the perceptions of manhood and men's um, you know, not seeking health care. And certainly mental health has a stigma associated with it that keeps not only young men, but all of us or many of us away from the services we need. So thank you so much for raising that. Um, Oscar, can we hear from you now? What are your thoughts on policy recommendations? Um, <clears throat> uh, one policy change in my country that I would recommend to promote good health, well-being for boys and young men could be uh, comprehensive sexuality education focused at being delivered at family or household level. To me, uh, this is derived from the phrase Charity begins from home, not school, not school at all. Uh, we should ensure that uh, this education challenges traditional gender norms and uh, stereotypes. It will promote healthy challenge, healthy uh, and equitable relationships between uh, boys and girls. As you heard from Malizani saying that uh, we should put a beam and we balance it. I feel like we should not neglect the other side and put the other side up to balance the beam. Let us put equal portion on each. Uh, if the ABYM is getting this, let the AGYW also get the same. Uh, so this uh, education should be accessible to all young men, including those in rural areas, and uh, also be sensitive to the needs of individuals with disabilities and different cultural backgrounds. Uh, while the focus is primarily on uh, school-based education, when it comes to profession, I believe we should consider incorporating models that address career development and life skills to prepare young men for, prof pro for professional lives. And uh, to promote safe and responsible sexual behavior, still the comprehensive sexuality education does that. And yeah, in this education, we should provide a uh, information on sexual health, uh, contraception, and uh, prevention of sexually, uh, sexually transmitted infections, including HIV, to equip young men with knowledge and skills to make informed decisions about their sexual health. When you come to my facility, you find that, uh, when you go to her records, you find that a number of young girls come in every day for, for family, pl family planning advices for, for such information, but you'll never see 
you don't ever see my boys. Like you don't see them, and you feel like, are they even around? Hmm? Do they really care about their sexual health? So I don't know that uh, I I don't know what should be done about that, but we should try to look into into focusing comprehensive sexual sexuality education at family level because charity begins from home, please. Uh, what I also would like to emphasize is a uh, policy of uh, mandatory testing based on the national guidelines to enhance identification and uh, empowering the school nurses on heart literacy uh, to improve on the, on the, on the adherence of uh, the school going students. Personally, from my personal experience, believe me, I have never suppressed when I am at school. I have never taken my medication well. I should confess that I missed, I dodged. Why? And I can't go to the school nurse because obviously with no doubt, she's going to tell other people that I have AIDS and I don't like people to know that. Mm -hmm. And if me by then in my primary school or at, at secondary school, I didn't like that to be known out. How about someone uh, out there who is not yet disclosed how to, 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 to the rest? How do they feel about that? I think we should... Uh, we should uh we should put up on uh, on the policy of mandatory testing. Let people know their status. This will really uh improve on the identification. So these policy changes should be designed to be inclusive, culturally sensitive, and accessible to young men across the country. I repeat, including rural areas, please, by addressing uh, sexual and uh, reproductive health, mental and and mental well being, as Malizani said already and uh, teaching economic opportunities and how to parent. And uh, I believe we can support the young men holistically well and uh, contribute to overall improvement in their, in their health. Uh, successful implementation of uh, mandatory testing policies should be accompanied by uh, a strong emphasis on uh, education, awareness and creating a supportive environment to ensure compliance and minimization of uh, stigma, both in schools and workplaces. Uh, and we should, I think, let me stop there, not to take too much time. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Oscar. <laughs> I really hope our policymakers and advocates were listening intently because you all have given us lots of um, in good information and recommendations to work with. Um, I was especially uh, um, aware of your comments around the role of parents. In a previous life, I worked in sexual and reproductive health, and we were known to say that parents are the primary educators of their children. So I really love the ideas around um, community-based work and engaging parents in all of our efforts. So thank you very much for your feedback. Um, our next question, I'll start with Isaac. Um, PEPFAR has supported HIV programs for over 20 years, but our progress can be easily derailed if we lose our focus, conviction, or fail to address the inequities, many of which are fueled by stigma and discrimination and punitive laws that stand in our way. How do you think young men can support sustaining PEPFAR's gains in, in the country where you work? What can you do to help us sustain these gains? Thanks, Isaac. All right. Thank you once again, Madam Tijuana. I, I think from my perspective, to be able to continue and sustain the enormous impact of PEPFAR across countries, especially in my country, Ghana, Adolescents can play a crucial role in reducing stigma and eliminating some punitive laws. First and foremost, I think adolescents need to advocate for policy change. Young men can work to change laws and policies. I thank you. That You're frozen. May, I'm sorry. You froze a little bit. Maybe you turn off your camera. Sorry about that. Okay. Go ahead. Please, can you hear me now? All right. Thank you. Yes. Yes. So I was saying. Hello. 
Go ahead. We can hear you, Isaac. So I said, first and foremost, I think adolescents need to advocate for policy change. Young men can work to change laws and policies that eliminate stigma against people living with HIV or that prevent them from accessing healthcare services. And uh, I believe this can be accomplished by involving young people in the formulation of policies. Like for example, in the programming, in the monitoring of in interventions related to sexual reproductive health rights and HIV AIDS. Their meaningful participation is crucial to ensuring that programs and policies effectively address the needs of these adolescent boys, young and men. Nevertheless, I think fighting stigma and discrimination continue to be major barriers to HIV prevention and treatment by campaigning for the rights of people living with HIV and promoting empathy and understanding. Young men may confront and address these concerns within their communities. So in addition, ensuring the meaningful involvement of key stakeholders like so from this aspect, I'm talking about stakeholders in Ghana. So like queen mothers, chiefs, opinion leaders, assembly members, and other influential leaders, like the regional ministers, district health director, and so forth. And their role in the HIV AIDS program is critical as this can help reduce stigma and discrimination. For, for example, peer support and education by stakeholders will empower adolescent boys and young okay, together with adolescent okay. boys promote quality health. Again, calling others to action is essential and can contribute to sustaining communication and development of a strong message as an illustration using social proof, contemporary technology and consistency. So in the nutshell, I would love to conclude that PEFA programs have worked and supported our countries, especially Ghana, towards HIV epidemic control. And it is up to us, the young boys, to come together with community stakeholders because we can't leave them behind. They are part of us. And work to scale up the cost-effective interventions such as the drop-in centers for government and local support or funding including possible local manufacturing of some of the commodities that are largely depends on PEFA support as it is the only way to sustain the gains. So that is my humble opinion. Thank you. Oh, Tijuana, you're on mute. Sorry. As with all great conversations, uh, the time flies by when, when conversations are interesting and as engaging as the one we are having here today. Um, unfortunately, we have about eight minutes left. I'd like to take maybe three or four minutes. We have two questions in the chat that we would like to ask our panelists to respond to. And maybe one or two of you can, um, can come off if you feel so moved. So the first question is like so many women, myself included, who want to stand in solidarity with young men and boys, we wanna know how can or should we partner with you to support your efforts? And so any one of you can feel free to respond to that question. Anybody, please. Yes, Morton, you want to respond? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, taking that question, uh, how uh, adolescent girls and young women can help us improve our health is that uh, firstly, they have to be open to us as their boyfriends, as their brothers, as their husbands. They have to tell us the truth about uh, uh, self-sex. 
I mean, they don't have to fear us to tell us to say, uh, we need to protect ourselves before we engage into intercourse. And they need to also encourage us to visit the healthcare facilities if we still sick. They don't have to be looking us at, at us to say, no, we're men, we're strong, we're going to get well soon. No, they need to encourage us to visit uh, healthcare uh, service centers so that we can uh, improve uh, our health as adolescent boys and uh, young men. I think someone else can take it up from there. Okay, and I think some people are responding in the chat too. Um, Totello, would you like to respond? And then I'll move to the our last question. You're on mute, Totello. So. Okay. Okay. Everyone mute and um, we can educate each other to challenge uh, gender stereotypes and promote um, positive and practice um, attitudes and behavior based on equality and respect as human beings and have the respect for both each other, regardless whether you are male or female. But we can have um, a nice conversation talking about gender equality so we can conquer all these um, the negative gender norms around human beings. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think what I'm hearing is a common theme is the, is the need for young men and young women to communicate with one another, to share their thoughts, perspectives, and ideas around these most sensitive issues. It's great that we have programs for AGYW and for ADYM, but we need to create platforms where the two can come together and have these conversations. So unfortunately, we're just about out of time. We did have one or two more questions, and I know you all have prepared some responses, so perhaps we can share them in the um, notes that we send out to everyone that has participated participated in the post session. I do want to leave you with one thing. Um, attending this webinar is but a first step in our efforts to engage, reach, and serve adolescent boys and young men. But as the next step, I always like to end these webinars with a call to action. So today I'm asking each of you to make a commitment to act, to do something in partnership with the adolescent boy or young men in your life or with whom you are working. Uh, we have a uh, mentee meter that uh, we want to share with you, and we ask you to please share the one thing you will do in the next three months to advance the needs of adolescent boys and young men. If you wouldn't mind completing this by the end of the day, and we will share the responses with everyone again in the post-session email that we'll send to all participants. I want to thank you for joining us today. This has been a great discussion around a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and I'm sure to many of you as well. I want to thank you for your interest in this very important topic and for your commitment to advancing the cause of adolescent boys and young men. Please have a great rest of your day, and don't forget to log on to the Mentimeter and let us know what actions you will take after this call. Thank you so much. Hello, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone.